What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast with me and the beauty. We're going to hang out today and tell you about something we just experienced together. What did we just experience, Kate? Episode two. Episode two of? Yep, The Last of Us. I, I, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, it's been a long time since I've been this surprised at how amazing uh, <laughs> something could be. Uh, my initial thoughts of the first episode I had a lot of critiques and, and a lot of criticism on, you know, some of the characters and some of the choices, but I'm starting to feel a little bit different about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Already. This, uh, this show is, is one of the best, so far, one of the best video game adaptations, if not the best video ad- adaptation I've ever seen in my life. And it's only on that second episode. Um, yeah. They're it's staying pretty close to the games. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some lines in it from the games, like exact lines and stuff. The world, like the whole um, overgrown areas and all that stuff, the city, it really looks just like the game. Yeah, um, everything from the set design to, uh, like you said, some of the quotes and, and even some of the extra layers that they've added into this game uh, I mean into this this show uh, they, they added some background that didn't exist before and normally when that happens it it's like a, a, a director or producer they say I want to you know do something and it, it doesn't feel like it really fits but the fact that they got Neil Druckmann who I hate uh, behind this uh, he actually created this and it actually works really really well the beginning of the show there's going to be spoilers in this talk so if you haven't seen episode two go check it out come back to us and we'll finish giving you our thoughts on it but before we get into spoilers or anything like that i'll just say uh um ellie um is that's ellie even though she looks like my daughter wouldn't nova call her she's at down since down syndrome daydream it's what, it's what she called uh, Bella Ramsey. Uh, she is. She feels like Ellie. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, she's growing on me. Um, some some things she said in this episode kind of was like, oh yeah, that was Ellie. That she would have said that. She would have done that. If you ask uh, me, she's a little bit meaner than Ellie of the game, but in this world, it kind of makes sense. Um, Joel seems so Joel, and I love Tess. Tess. Tess in this right here, I mean, Tess is fantastic. She's kind of like the voice of reason because Joel is like, you know, he don't want to do none of it. He's terrified of Ellie. He's like, you know, she's the one pushing him to do it. She's the one saying it's going to be okay. We just got to get through this. You can do it. And yeah, she's kind of like pushing him along. Yeah. Um, it, and, and now we're going to actually get into to some spoilers because uh, there's a lot to talk about in this episode. I was writing notes. I felt like I was one of the people on set. You know, every time something happened, I had to write it down because it was crazy. Um, the show starts off and it gives us some more background into how this um, this pandemic began. It starts us off in Jakarta um, and they find this Indonesian scientist. Her name is uh, Ibu Ranta. And um, she is a, um, a specialist on cordyceps. Uh, over in Indonesia and they find her and they have her come into this lab where they have this woman that they killed recently this is of course before the pandemic actually you know really killed the world took off but I I think this might be in the area where like uh, patient zero would have been because she got bit and then she started attacking people at work then the police went to find out what was going on she started attacking them and they shot her but she had these cordyceps in her mouth. They checked this scientist checked her leg where she got bit and looked under the skin and there was cordyceps. And this, this scientist said that cordyceps can't exist in human beings. So they added this whole new layer that didn't exist in the game that felt so fleshed out. Like, like, uh, Neil Druckmann thought about this, you know, years ago, but he didn't have, you know, the, the opportunity to put it into the game. It just fits so well. And, and there was a really ominous moment where uh, the police, I guess the police chief over in Indonesia asked her, he said, what what, what can we do? She said, bomb it, bomb the city, bomb everybody. It's the only thing we can do. And then she said, can you drive me home? I want to be with my family. 
Uh, they should have listened to her. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. But if they listened to her, we wouldn't have this great show, and the game wouldn't have worked. But um, it was really, really powerful, and, and and you know, it had a lot of heft to it, a lot of weight to it at the beginning of the show. Of course, it didn't show anybody getting killed there, but it kind of gave more background into what happened and how it happened, and it just made this world feel more fleshed out to me. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, it gave backstory. It always makes it for, feel more real. You, like you're more invested in it now. Yeah. Um, you, you also hit on the fact that Tess is like the voice of reason because now in episode two, they're taking Ellie across, this, you know, across the country to um, where the fly, fireflies want her to go. And uh, Tess is more the voice of reason She's actually believing now that Ellie uh, could potentially be uh, immune. And something happens to Ellie in this episode that really kind of, uh, it's different from the game. Oh, yeah. It's different from the game. And see, normally when these kind of things happen in in, uh, shows and stuff, I get upset because you're changing the canon. But this, it it makes sense. Ellie gets bit again. She gets bit. Um basically in the same spot she got bit before yeah and uh, for anybody who's played the game you all know that Tess gets bit and um, they also changed that dynamic of what happened to Tess but to me that was this was also more meaningful to me somehow yeah. what happened to Tess in this episode um, but yeah they um, they changed the dynamic of what happened to Ellie she got bit twice which really gave Tess and Joel an opportunity to, to really kind of gauge whether or not she's really infected or not. Because in the game, she already had a pre-existing wound. They kind of looked at it. They were like, hmm, here she gets bit. At the same time, Tess gets bit. They wait for a little bit of time, a couple hours, and Tess has already got this this growth, this infection taking over her. Spreading, yeah, it's spreading through her body. And Ellie's is just like a little bite mark. Yeah, and so that's kind of a moment. And... I wrote this kind of at the end of my notes, but Tess, her, her ending was super powerful and super emotional. And if, you know, I, the, in the game, when Tess is talking to Joel and asking him, she's like, please do this for me. I don't, I don't ask you for anything. It was, it seems so much more real and so much more thought out and, and, and so well written. And I was like, God, this is good writing. This is a good show. These people are acting their asses off. And I love I love every minute of this episode. This is one of my favorite episodes on TV. This TV show might make me like Neil Druckmann again. And for people who wonder why I hate Neil Druckmann, I don't hate the guy. But I dislike him for what he did in part two. That's why I haven't bought the game. I named my daughter Ellie. So obviously, I like the guy's work. But this is one of my favorite, favorite um uh, episodes on on TV. This is up there in my mind with some of the great greatest shows out there so far. Do you think you would like it as much if you didn't play the game? Uh, no. I think I'd still like it. But the thing is, it's more of a treat when you know what to expect and you don't expect that to happen, and then you see it actually happen. Or, or something new happened that like intertwined so, so good. good. Yeah, yeah, but, with but what's already been done. But the thing is, if you never watched it, something new happening wouldn't exist in your mind. So it could only work if you knew about the existing properties. So we know about the game. I played through the game numerous times, and so in my mind, like the scene where Ellie says "fuck you, man," I didn't ask for this. It plays in my mind from all the times I played th- through the game, and to see that happen today, I was like, this. I, I looked at you and we were watching it. I said, this is the game. You know, very seldom do you get that. You don't get that really anywhere where someone creates something like that. And they have so many just amazing, amazing um, uh, moments that were powerful in a different medium coming to the big screen and, and, and being acted by very, very talented actors. They also changed something that is more ter- They made this more terrifying than the game. I didn't think it was really that that possible the game is very very terrifying because you're actually controlling joel and trying to get away from these things that you know are they're very very vile and they'll kill you immediately if you get bit you're going to die so that's scary but to 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 be in this world watching it and hearing those clickers first of all the clickers 
It looks awesome. The clickers are terrifying. They look awesome and they sound so scary and like and the way it just like popped up next to Joel, it was right there. And you could see like the full face and everything. It looked it looked awesome. Yeah, uh, the clickers are terrifying. Um, the sounds they make, the way that they move, like these contortionists, I guess they hired to do this role, and the sound, how 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 adept their hearing is. Like if you make the slightest sound, Joel's reloading his gun, and they 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 were coming after him. And it was really, really terrifying. One good thing I'll say in the game, if you encounter a clicker and you don't have a shiv, you're dead. You're dead. They'll run up on you and they'll just bite your neck and you're, you're done. It was pretty cool to see Joel like holding one off and fighting it and, and, and falling. You kind of get to, you kind of get to run away from him. You know, in, in the show, he's running away more space is created in the game. You can't really do that. They like chase you down no matter what. One other thing that I saw that I laughed because, you know, I know very few people probably would have thought about that. But during that scene, it was just like the video game because Joel was running and hiding around the corners of tables. And Ellie was like hiding on the side of the table. And then my mind was like in my mind's eye. I could see myself controlling Joel and Ellie's like over on the side on the peripheral on the side of the table. And the clickers don't come to get her or nothing like that. But it was really, really, it was really, really awesome. Um, this is a special show. I think this is, it's really, I want to watch it again. It was really, really good. This is probably going to be one of my favorite shows. I mean, unless they months in it, but from what I hear from people who watched the whole thing, this is special. They also did something else that they changed that made this world even more terrifying. So the cordyceps grow underground. They grow underground and Tess said they go for miles. And d during one scene, when they were on top of a building, they were coming out of a building, they looked. And it looked like a sea of, of infected. They were just people laying on the ground, writhing. It looked like writhing in pain. But they were like, kind of how you see birds fly through the air in unison. They were like moving like that. Kind of like the wind was blowing. They were all moving at the same time on the ground. I was trying to figure out what was going on. And Tess was explaining um, that they are all in tune with the cordyceps. And the cordyceps... They're all connected. And the cordyceps are underground. So she said, you could be a mile away. Our air condition just kicked on. It's about to get cool in here. But um, she said, if you're a mile away and you step on the cordyceps, it'll alert all them. They'll get up and come after you. And that's what happened. Oh, my God. In this episode. And that's not something that ever happened in the games. But I think it's something they should have added to the games because that was... Whew, terrifying, okay, because uh, there's a scene where Joel and Ellie and Tess are inside this area where a bunch of guys, they, they, I mean, they killed one another. And one of them wakes up, and he's, he's infected. He's starting to turn. And he's waking up and, and trying to crawl toward them, and Joel shoots him in the head. And as soon as Joel shoots him, you see the cordyceps wrapping around his hand on the ground. And then all, it, it's going underground, and then you see all these infected right like four or five blocks down the road start waking up and running and it looked like a scene from 28 weeks later and and they heard him and joel looked outside and it's like we got one minute terrifying 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 stuff um it's like it, it's like it alerts them to wherever the people are it like lets them know it, it draws them to them which is pretty cool yeah um all I'll say is this, man. This, it's an incredible show. I think that Naughty Dog would be wise. Kind of like The Witcher, how the, the, the new Witcher game, how they have the DLC from the, the show. You can play as Henry Cavill. I mean, Superman. Um, and, and they added some of these new DLCs and stuff. If they were to go back to the PS5 and The Last of Us um, Part 1 and add a DLC that changed some dynamics of the game like this, where you could see like cordyceps on the ground if you step on them, maybe it'd be a, a different mode. But you step on them and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of them coming after you and stuff like that. I think it'd be really, really, really cool. Or, or different areas of the game that they didn't show in the game, but they showed on the show. Mm. I'm just super excited about what they're doing here. I want to know how many episodes there are. I want. I mean, I haven't really done my research on this because you know my brain was okay. Here we go. It's going to be another get woke, go broke type situation, but they, I guess these, these companies are tired of going broke. 
and they wanted to do something for the fans. And I think this is a huge plus for anyone who's a fan of this series. Did you like it? I mean, what if you were to give mm-hmm. episode two a score? Uh, a, let's just do um, a high school score or uh, A through F. What would you have given this? Uh, I give this episode an A. It was really good. I think I, I would. I don't even want to say it, but I'll give it an A plus. I think I can't think of anything. I like Pedro Pascal. I like um, Bella Ramsey. I think I don't know the woman who played Tess. I think she was incredible. I loved uh, all the clickers action, seeing those familiar scenes, you know, delving deep into the background of the story and the lore and fleshing that out and making it seem more real. I can't think of a single thing that I did not love about this episode. I give it an A plus. I thought it was incredible. Now, oh, and, and another thing before we go, they don't know about bloaters yet yeah i forgot about that they think bloaters are a myth just somebody yeah making up rumors yeah ellie was mentioning that to tess and to joel and they were like what is that and she's like i heard about that they're like no 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 but clickers are out there so the next episode should show the bloater um we've seen that in the trailer all these clickers and, and, and infected coming out of the water then the bloater coming up and when that happens, I'm going to be super duper excited. I, I, I'm, I'm losing my mind right now just thinking about it. I hate having to wait every week to watch it. Yeah, they, they need the Netflix uh, plan and let us just binge it. But, you know, at least they know we're going to be here every Sunday up late at night, still having to go to work on Monday. But it's definitely, definitely worth it. You guys let us know in the comments. Did you see episode two of The Last of Us? What are your thoughts on it? Did you love it as much as we do? Um, do you have any critiques of the show? Did we miss something? Did we not see something that you did? Let us know in the comments below. Also, I'd like to know if anybody has not played the game but is watching this show. Oh, yeah. I want to know what they think about it because that would be super interesting to me. Um, I might ask my mom because I know this is something she would watch. And of course, she didn't play the game. I might see what her thoughts are on this because that's the only person I can think of that hasn't played the game but would watch the show you think your sister would watch it i don't know she's she might she's, she's, she's not into zombie type she's scared no movies yeah she thinks ketchup <laughs> is spicy all right <laughs> Well, look, guys, we appreciate you hanging out with us for our review of episode two. Please give a thumbs up. That thumbs up does help the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now. Share with all your friends and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Thank you.